Today we will explain how the pancreas has the ability to heal itself, and how scientists at the Diabetes Research Institute of the University of Miami have been able to harness that ability to bring back the beta cells that make insulin. The pancreas is an organ with two very different functions. Most of the organ is made of acinar cells, which make all the digestive juices that are used by the body to digest food. These are collected and transported to the duodenum by an extensive network of pancreatic ducts. Acinar and ductal cells are collectively known as the exocrine pancreas, and they make up more than 90% of the organ. Then, there is the endocrine pancreas, composed of thousands of small clusters of cells called islets of Langerhans. Islets secrete insulin and other hormones to the bloodstream, thus helping all the cells of the body take up all the glucose they need, while keeping blood sugar levels within a normal range. When you have type 1 diabetes, the immune system attacks and destroys the beta cells of the islets that make insulin. As a result, people with this disease need to take insulin for the rest of their lives. For more than a hundred years, it has been suspected that the pancreatic ducts, other than transporting digestive juices, also harbor progenitors, stem-like cells with the ability to regenerate not only more exocrine cells, but also islets of Langerhans. While there is extensive evidence to support it, this hypothesis remains controversial owing to conflicting results in transgenic mouse models. The mouse model has been incredibly useful to the field, but we've been able to cure diabetes in hundreds of different ways in mice, and none of them has worked in humans. So we thought it was important to establish if these progenitor cells can regenerate the pancreas in a true human-based model. The problem is that no such model existed until a recent initiative sponsored by the network of pancreatic organ donors with diabetes led to the groundbreaking generation of human pancreatic slices at the Diabetes Research Institute. As the name suggests, these are thin sections of live pancreatic tissue that preserve the native anatomy of the organ, with intact acinar tissue, ducts, and islets. In a way, it is like having a window into a live and functioning human pancreas in a dish. Unfortunately, these slices were good for just a couple of days, losing viability and function rapidly as they degraded and disintegrated. The DRI team found that one key factor driving this degradation was the lack of sufficient oxygenation. They were able to overcome this using a novel culture device that provides oxygen to the slices through a membrane made of perfluorocarbon, or PFC, a compound with an extremely high affinity for oxygen. PFC dishes extended the life of human pancreatic slices beyond two weeks, presenting the field with the very first human-based model of the pancreas, one where we could at last study pancreatic regeneration. The teams of doctors Juan Dominguez Bendala and Ricardo Pastori had previously identified progenitor cells in the pancreas of human donors, including those with type 1 diabetes. One key feature of these cells is that they responded to a growth factor called BMP7, which stands for bone morphogenetic protein 7. The BMP family of factors acts as fuel for stem cells across the body, and the pancreas, as they discovered, is no exception. The ability to culture human pancreatic slices for 10 days gave them the idea of treating slices from the same donor with or without BMP7, and examining their composition at the single cell level at different time points. They did this using a technique called single cell RNA sequencing. This approach consists in the analysis of most of the thousands of genes that are being expressed in every single cell of any given tissue, in this case the pancreas. Once the cells are dissociated and sequenced, a powerful algorithm allows you to visualize all the families of cells grouped by kinship. For example, this is the map of a pancreatic slice from a non-diabetic donor, where cells are organized in continents and countries, if you will. We like the analogy of countries and continents so much that we adapted bioinformatics tools to make them look like a cartographical maps. The continents to the left is home to all the Asinar countries, whereas the one to the right harbors all the nations that call themselves Dr. including the one where progenitor cells live. There are smaller islands that represent the islets of Langerhans, blood vessels, and immune cells. However, for all its value, this was nothing more than a static map of the pancreas. 
But what happens in pancreatic slices from the same donor when you expose them to BMP7? What the DRI investigators saw was nothing short of striking. Where you had before two distinct continents, there was now a bridge that brought together the two major domains. A literal bridge that connected the ductal and the acinar domains. Further investigation into the nature of that bridge revealed that it was made of ductal progenitor cells, which were being mobilized by BMP7 and adopting hybrid ducto acinar characteristics. The beauty of this approach is that you can integrate the data sets of treated and untreated slices at multiple time points, and thus create a motion picture at the single cell level of all the molecular events that are being triggered by BMP7. This dynamic analysis, the first of its kind, told a story that no other model in existence could have revealed, that BMP7 mobilizes ductal progenitor cells out of the ductal epithelium and into the acinar compartment, where these newly created hybrid cells differentiate, on the one hand, into acinar cells, and, on the other, onto new islet insulin-producing beta cells. Going back to the bridge analogy, BMP7 would both create a bridge and then transport the building materials for new islets across the ocean. One important aspect of the study was the validation of all these complex bioinformatics analysis, and, especially, to establish whether the newly created beta cells are functional, in other words, if they produce and secrete insulin in response to glucose stimulation. To do so, the DRI investigators infected slices from T1D donors with viruses that acted as Trojan horses for the delivery of specific reporter genes that made the cells fluoresce in different colors depending on their fate. The strategy was designed so that pre-existing beta cells would be tagged in blue, whereas the ones arising as a result of BMP7 treatment would undergo a red to blue transition. Additionally, another fluorescent marker would kick in if insulin was secreted in response to glucose stimulation. The blue cells in this field are newly formed beta cells. When we increase the concentration of glucose in the culture medium, there is a visible flash of calcium influx into the cell that is directly proportional to the amount of insulin that is being secreted. When we quantified this, this activity pattern was consistent with that of functional beta cells. Mm -hmm. These experiments represent the very first demonstration that the pancreas of T1D donors has the ability to regenerate functional beta cells and open the door to the design of novel pharmacological approaches to restore beta cell mass in patients.